Okay. So we're here with Victoria from Adobe, uh, and she's going to run us through what's new in After Effects. Uh, this is the beta version, so we're going to see all the new fun stuff, I suppose. We, we've been talking about it a lot recently. There's been some really good additions, uh, especially like like he loves the being able to drop 3D in there and everything. Yeah, we can talk about some of that. We've got some really cool things in here. Uh, 3D is definitely one of the things that's on the way soon. Uh, but shipping in May will be the properties panel. Yes. Have you had a chance to use it? I was in the uh, demo, but please run us all through it because sure. uh, so the it's, cool thing, it's good. The cool thing with the properties panel is I barely need to demo it. You already know how it works. Yeah. And if you're coming from Photoshop or Illustrator or one of the other apps that has a properties panel, it's going to make it way easier to make the transition into motion, which is one of the things I'm personally excited about. But as someone who's been using After Effects since I was 13 years old, uh, I, I like it because it's a shortcut between creative decision and actually making that decision. Yeah. So if we're, say we're toning down this uh, lower third here, we don't want it to be quite so colorful. Maybe I click on this zigzag line here and I need to change this color and I start twirling down and there's all these little triangles and there's the stroke right there. I have to go find this in the timeline. You go hunting for something. There's this gap between create a decision and what you want to do. In the properties panel, it's just right there. It's right here on the side. I can pick another color. Let's just oh, grab that nice peach color from the back. And so it goes from having to do a little bit of detective work to even make a change to it anticipates what you need. And so if you've got shapes, you get shape controls. If I click on text here, I get my text controls. I don't have to open the character and paragraph panels. It's just all right here. And then when I click on something that's not text, that goes away. And so I just have my layer transforms. It, 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 it solves so many, not that they were problems, but I had so many different uh, preset layouts in After Effects where I'm like, this is the one I do for text. This is the one I do for it. Yeah. So having that change uh, actively is huge. And it's also really meant to be a companion to the timeline. It's not meant to replace it. Right. So you can do everything you want in the properties panel, and you can enable animation. But you notice if I click on this keyframe control here, it's going to show me that control in the timeline. Wonderful. And I can actually double click any property, and it's going to reveal it down here so I can start keyframing. So you get both the timeline navigation piece and the instant access to the controls in one. Does it only pop up the relevant ones so you don't have to go twirling down? It doesn't show you a giant list, it's just the one thing? It's just the one thing. Amazing. And so if I select everything here, you'll see that it's not showing me every single property because I've selected text and shapes and comps and all kinds of stuff. It's going to show me the stuff they have in common. And say I wanted to change the opacity of everything, I could double click that. It's going to show me all my opacity That's properties. That's actually amazing. So it's really I, I love catching him out in the corner. He's always like, it's he gets good. excited. It's good. And it's, it's the easiest. It demos itself because it's just a guide to what you can do with what you have selected. And After Effects has 30 years of stuff in it. So it's our 30th anniversary. Oh, wow. And so there's a lot there. And you have to know where it is. And this is going to give you the sense of the possible. Well, and also it's like, I know everyone loves when like tentpole features come out or updates or anything, but it's not even a feature, it's just a workflow thing. And, and in my opinion, it's something more exciting than, you know, Adam's favorite thing of the 3D dropper, you know, cause I might use the 3D dropper. I, every second of every minute spent in After Effects that is helping your workflow. What we've seen with folks in our public beta who've been using this and we've been getting all their feedback and refining it as we go, is that more than 70% of our beta users have not just tried this out once, but have built it into their ongoing workflow, and now we have people saying, I can't go back to the release until this ships. Right. And that's the best feeling. Of course, yeah. Oh, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, one of the other things we're chatting about the show is OpenColor.io and Aces, uh, oh, yeah. which is a big deal for especially anybody doing VFX, animation, any of that, yeah. anything where you're in a pipeline. Uh, and actually, here's a great example. This clip that I grabbed and threw in the background here, that is actually a clip that is not looking its best right now because I'm not in the right color space. I haven't adjusted any of that. And this project right now isn't in Ace's color space. So what Open Color I lets us do is I can just click my color engine here, switch over to new system, say OK, make sure I'm in 32 bits because we want all that color goodness, all that and color richness. And tetrahedral. Yeah, that's on by default now. Thank you. So we've got better LUT interpolation. Everything's looking really good. But because we're using a configuration file, all my other settings get set for me. So right now I'm in ACES 1.2. I could switch if I need to. I'm going to say OK. And now I've got the ability to see in my timeline what my preview is. And for a clip like this, I can see that it doesn't quite look right. I need to change something. That's where I go into interpret footage. And this is Canon. I think it's Canon C-Log. C-Log 2. I believe so. Let's scroll down. Ah, oh, the scroll I, I wheel on this mouse is backwards. 
Cannons. I think go. it's log three. Is it? I think this one is. And oh, you get this super yeah, yeah. bright, colorful footage now. And so this same footage that before was all washed out looks great. And I can combine a whole bunch of different cameras, 3D renders from other apps coming in, all this different stuff into that unified, super wide gamut space. And I can preview what it's going to look like in sRGB, Rec. 709. Oh, excellent. And this is totally non-destructive. So this is a little preview. You can just switch back and forth. And can you send that out to an external monitor so that if you had that monitor calibrated for those workspaces, you would see it? There's a lot of really good workflows like that built in here. Amazing. And then on export, we've got the same settings so that you can embed things in your files on export in the render queue. That, so it's really an end-to-end -end workflow yeah. to keep you within that ACES color space. And that's not, not specifically ACES but obviously color management has been something I, I personally I've been asking for, but I know a lot of people, so it's cool to see it at least hit After Effects. I want to see it in Premiere, but in After Effects. Uh, <laughs> Premiere's on the roadmap. It's going to be a little further out. We sure. wanted to start with AE because it's in the middle of the pipeline. Right. Often Premiere's the destination, but with After Effects, you've got stuff coming in that's color managed and stuff going out that's color managed. So it's yeah. really important to be able to keep that through line in place. Sure. And that, that's a very, like, polished looking... Uh, dialog box too. It, it's super easy. It used to be you had a plugin and you had to make lots of copies of it and you had guide layers and all these settings. You can uninstall the plugin, it's all native, and it just works. It's That's just awesome. a couple clicks. So I'm very excited about that one. Oh, what else should we talk about? You want to talk 3D? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So this is a little bit <laughs> he's, he's, already, he's nodding. Yes. Uh, this is one. Oh, wow. What is going on in here? Somebody has... There we go. Let's reset this project. I'm actually going to get out of OCIO here. I thought you were doing here. a bit for a second. You're like, oh, who did this? It was me or something. <laughs> it's not my demo station. Yeah, I don't know what's happened to this project. Let's jump back to our previous color settings here. Uh, what I'm working in right now is the new Mercury 3D engine. This is shared with some of our substance tools. Uh, Adobe Arrow uses this. And it's actually a gaming style engine. So it's fast, it's snappy, it's performant. And this could get even faster, realizing I'm render, I am at half uh, zoom, full render. Let's drop this down to half. Let's go a little faster. Uh, give that one second to reload. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of little 3D beans flying around. We've got this nice little uh, coffee bag here. And all of this is true native 3D. So in the same scene, we've got multiple 3D models and 3D shapes and 3D text. Awesome. And that's what's cool about this is this is not a flat layer in the composite stack. This is true 3D. Uh, so we have GL GLB, GLTF, and OBJ import right now. Uh, that list is going to get longer. There's a lot more where this came from. This is still in an early phase, and we really want everybody's feedback on where we should go next, because sure. we have a very long roadmap ahead of us we're really excited about, but we need to know what's most important to you. Awesome, yeah. So, I'm loving the 3D stuff, it's so much fun to play with. Well, and like we were saying with uh, the Substance folks, uh, it's not, because I don't use a ton of After Effects in my work, but anytime tools like that come out, I'm like, well, that's lowered the bar, the barrier to entry enough that I could go dip my toe in it and see what's going on, you know? And we see a lot of users who, their clients just give them a 3D model, assume they can use it, right? and they need to bring it in with, with their text and shapes and everything else, their video clips. And so we're really trying to focus on that intersection of 2D and 3D space and giving you the ability to sort of do it all in one. Sure, that's really cool. It's a great update. Yeah, I'm excited. I think it's going to be super fun. That's in public beta right now. Uh, there's more where that came from coming soon, uh, so stay tuned. Uh, the most recent thing we added was if you bring in a GLB model that has embedded cameras and lights, even if they're animated, you can extract them, turn them into After Effects cameras and lights. They'll have the keyframes right there in the timeline. <laughs> I'm done. I, it, I've, over the past three days, I've started to keep an eye on them out of the corner of my eye because it's always like... It's good stuff. You guys don't get to see cameraman Adam, but I will, we're just gonna, <laughs> I'm going to attach a GoPro to you that faces... <laughs> uh, that's really cool. Is that... Or, anything else? Uh, this, is all the, this is the big stuff. Sure. Uh, anything else you're curious about? Uh, the, I wouldn't know what to ask. We'll end it there, but thank you so much for showing cool, me. Cool, thank and, you. Uh, that's Thanks for taking the time. That's a very exciting update. I'm really excited. Properties panel is just changing everything. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs>